This is Mrs. T's Chem Talk for AP Chem. And this is going to be a significant figure recap. So if this is my first video that you're seeing, I'm Mrs. T. My name is Elizabeth Tuminello. Oops. And I'm a chemistry teacher at Calhoun High School in Merrick, New York. Now, when we're talking about counting significant figures, anything that's not a zero, those would be our non-zero integers, they always count as significant figures. So if we have three, four, five, six, there has, it has four significant figures. Usually when we're talking about significant figures, we're talking about measurements. So maybe we're measuring 3,456 meters in which case every digit is non-zero. They all count as significant figures. Again, this value, this measurement would have four significant figures. When we talk about measuring, uh, counting the number of significant figures, a measurement could have four, um, could have three different kinds of zeros. And the first kind of zero is going to be a leading zero. These zeros are just placeholders, and any time a zero is just a placeholder, it's not a significant figure. So the only time you're going to have leading zeros is when there's a decimal place somewhere. So you might have a 0 0.048 liter, and these zeros are just to make sure that the 4 and the 8 are in the hundredths place and the thousandths place. So the zeros are important, but all they do is put the four in the hundredths place and the eight in the thousandths place. They don't actually um, bear any meaning in the measurement. So this value, this measurement, would have two significant figures. Moving forward, we have also have a zero, kind of zero called a captive zero. Captive zeros are zeros between, and they're between digits that aren't zeros or between any known significant figures. So if we had 16.07 meters, this zero is between the 16 and the 7. That makes that zero significant figure. So the one, the six, the zero, and the seven are each significant figures, which makes the measurement have four total significant figures. Any zero would be considered trailing if it's at the end of the non-zero digits. These zeros will be considered significant figures if there's a decimal present somewhere in the number. It doesn't mean that the zeros have to be after the decimal point. So 9.300 grams, these zeros are significant. So this has four significant figures. But we can also have the number 930 meters, and this decimal makes this zero a significant figure because the zero is after the non-zeros and there's a decimal present somewhere. So this measurement will have three significant figures, whereas the number 150, maybe we're measuring 150 meters with no decimal, has two significant figures because this is an ending zero with no decimal present in the number. But if we make it 150 with a decimal, meters, that decimal would make that measurement have three significant figures. The zero is now to the right of the non-zeros, and there's a decimal present somewhere. When we talk about counting significant figures, usually our conversion factors will have infinite numbers of significant figures and will not be considered. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters exactly. Um, 1,000 milliliters equals 1 liter exactly. 9 pencils, anything obtained by counting, would also be an exact figure, and we would not consider those when we're talking about calculating with significant figures. 
When we use exponential notation, also known as scientific notation, what's very good about it and what's very convenient about it is that any piece of the coefficient part of the number counts as significant figures. So when 300 is written, oops, sorry about that. When 300 is written as 3.00 times 10 to the 2, that would be 300 with three significant figures. If I needed that with two significant figures, I would do 3.0 times 10 to the 2, and that would give me 300 with two significant figures. Another way to do that is to put the bar over the furthest right zero that is significant. That would mean that anything that comes after that bar, any zeros after that bar, are not significant. When we're talking about significant figures or using them in mathematical operations, remember that for multiplication and division, we need to count the number of significant figures, and we round so that our answer has the same as the least. So 1.342 times 5.5, this has four significant figures, whereas 5.5 only has two significant figures. So my final answer can only have two significant figures. Maybe this was meters times meters, and we're getting our answer in meters squared. But either way, remember that our result cannot be any more certain than our least certain number that we, were, that we used in the calculation. And for multiplying and dividing, we do that by rounding to the least number of significant figures. For adding and subtracting, what we're going to do is round to the least number of decimal places that were used. For example, if we're doing 16.323 meters plus 9.2 meters, we're going to add and get 25.523 meters, right? 3, 2, 5, 15, carry the 1. But there was not a significant figure in this place here, the hundredths or the thousandths. So we have to round so that our final answer doesn't have a hundredths or a thousandths either. And we're going to get 25.5 meters. This went to the tenth. This went to the thousandth. The tenth is less than the thousandth. So we round to the tenth after adding. Or we can do this operation, I didn't realize there was an example, where we went to the, this one went to the thousandth, this one went to the hundredth, so we are going to round here so that our final answer only goes to the hundredth. When switching between operations, when you're going between multiplication and division and addition and subtraction, remember multiplication and division has the same set of rules, Addition and subtraction has the same set of rules for, for those two operations. So you're going to do all the like operations first according to order of operations, and you're going to round the result to significant figures before switching. When you round, you need to analyze the significant figures or decimal places depending on what you're switching to, and when using, when using that resulting number in the following operations. Any operation that follows, you need to have... Um, analyze the significant figures and the decimal places depending. So for example, if you have a volume where we have three numbers to multiply, the result of this multiplication can only go to two significant figures. This has four, this has three, this has two. So we round our result for our volume to its two significant figures before putting that value into the next part of the calculation. From massing the empty container and taking the mass with the sample, we have to subtract. So this goes to two decimal places, this one goes to three. Our answer gets rounded so that it goes to two decimal places. We then take these two numbers and analyze them in order to do the division between them. So the 13 has two significant figures, 14.74, 
has four significant figures. Two is less than four, so when we do our division down here, we have to round our result to two significant figures. So we do each set of operations according to their rules. We take the two results rounded, identify the number of significant figures because we're doing division, and then do our result that way. Round our result to the correct number of significant figures. That's the end of the review or the quick recap for significant figures. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, check out my channel, Mrs. T's Chem Talk. Any of those keywords, uh, those four keywords put together will get you to my channel. And good luck. Happy studying.